Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be looking at the latest release of Kali Linux, 2020.3. This version was just released to us, and I plan on going through some of the new tools and updates available to us with this release. Then I'll do a quick review of the Kali Linux distribution and check things out around their default desktop environment, XFCE. So for the first update, Kali Linux will be migrating over to ZSH as the default shell in the next release, which is 2020.4, but they went ahead and made some updates in this release in order to start the migration process. So if you start a terminal, and in that terminal you type ZSH, it's now available and you'll be switched over to ZSH instead of Bash. Instead of simply introducing ZSH as the new shell, they will be allowing users to have the option of still keeping Bash and using ZSH if they choose to do so. So now I can navigate my system using ZSH if I want, and we can use our tab to go ahead and go through the various different directories as well. Check out ZSH if you're interested. All right, and a new tool that Kali has released in 2020.3 is Win-Kex, which stands for Windows plus the Kali Linux desktop experience. This will allow you to have a persistent connection to a GUI in Kali using WSL2. It's very simple to install, as you can see below, but you need to be running Kali in the Windows subsystem for Linux version 2 in order to go ahead and take advantage of this new release. There's more information about this in the release notes that we're looking at right now. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below for you to check it out. And something else that's new is that the high DPI support is now available here in Kali. If you want to go ahead and run that support, you can go ahead and click on the start menu and just type in high DPI and you should see this Kali high DPI mode. If you click on it, you'll get this new high DPI mode enabled, but mine looks a little bit funky just because I'm using a virtual machine in order to go ahead and emulate this today just to check things out. I'll go ahead and switch back to the old mode by just simply toggling the same high DPI mode once more, and it's as easy as that to go back and forth. Kali Linux has also announced a new set of tools for helping with testing vulnerabilities in Bluetooth connections with the Kali NetHunter Bluetooth Arsenal that you now have access to if you use NetHunter on a mobile device. So if you have any interest in using these tools, make sure to go ahead and check them out. If you're new and stopping by to watch a review today, make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. One other thing that they've done is introduce brand new icons for a majority of their tools. So if I click on all applications, you can see that almost every single tool and application has their own custom icon now. This wasn't the case before. They had some generic icons, but this is a minor update that they went ahead and made, although it does add to the look and feel of Kali Linux. They've also made minor tweaks to the GNOME desktop environment, and they've made some ARM updates. Make sure to go ahead and check those out if they interest you. I have a link in the description below. All right, and that's a majority of the updates to Kali Linux 2020.3. Let's go ahead and spend a few minutes reviewing Kali Linux and its default desktop environment here, XFCE. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. So for this version of Kali, the installer image has remained Pretty much the same and it's quite big at around four gigabytes but it includes a vast amount of security tools for testing vulnerabilities and hacking if we look on the desktop here we do have three things that come standard the trash bin file system and home if we click on our home folder we launched a default file manager which is thunar 1.8 you can go ahead and navigate around the system from here accessing your home folder as well as root file system directories if we exit out of here We'll continue on to the right hand side of the screen where you have the option of shutting down, restarting, or logging out of the current user. And to the left of that, we can go ahead and lock the screen. Left of that, we have access to the presentation mode and the power manager settings. Then the little bell icon signifies if we want to get notifications or not. We can set do not disturb if we don't want any notifications. And you can also set the notification settings from here as well. Left of that, we have the volume control as well as whether it's enabled or not. And then we have the wireless or wired connection that we're currently connected to and where you can make changes to as well and the current time and date. 
you click on it, you'll go ahead and get a calendar here. With this version of Kali Linux 2020.3, we have a new kernel update, which is 5.7 that they're running currently. The minimum system requirements here for Kali Linux is a dual core x86 instruction set with a 64-bit processor, two gigabytes of RAM, DDR2 preferred, with at least 20 gigabytes of storage space. Kali Linux is based on the Debian testing branch and its default desktop environment is XFCE. It's a distribution to start with if you're wanting to get into cybersecurity and it comes with all the necessary tools that you might need or want for testing out vulnerabilities and ethical hacking. These releases on Kali come in quarters and right now this is the third quarter release of the year with one more expected to come in the next few months. Continuing on to the left side of the screen, we have two little boxes here that allow us to switch between workspaces if we want. Workspace 1 and Workspace 2. Left of that, we have Kazam, which helps you record the current screen that you have. So you can either take a screenshot or record the screen and specify whether you want an area, a little window, or a full screen capture. There's other options as well, but this is a nice little tool to go ahead and have for quick launch in order to capture your screen quickly. System D is used as the init manager here in this system. And to the left of the screen recorder, we have a terminal launch, which we could launch. So the terminal that we're using by default here is the Q terminal. All right, I'll go ahead and exit out of this. We'll be back in the terminal in a little bit. As far as the install process goes, things have remained the same, but they've officially disabled the network mirror in the full installer. That way you don't get updates during the install process. This was causing slower install times, but they are warning people to make sure and go ahead and update their system after the install process finishes. Continuing on, we have quick access to some of the file system from here. We have the default home users directory, such as videos, pictures, music, downloads, documents, and desktop. We can also open a terminal or open a folder, which just launches the Thunar file manager here. Moving on to the left of that, if we have multiple windows open, you can minimize all windows by simply clicking this button so let's say I had this file manager opened up and I went ahead and clicked on this you can see everything gets minimized and everything gets pulled to the top up here here in the middle you do have access to multiple windows if you have them opened up so I have the file manager and the Kali terminal opened all right and finally continuing on to the start menu this is where we have all of our tools available for us for testing vulnerabilities and ethical hacking if we click on it we can use the search bar here to search for whatever tool we want to use. If we drag and drop down here, we can make this a little bigger to see. There are some pre-installed favorites here. We have the terminal, the file manager, a text editor here, and a web browser, which is the default Firefox. Kali Linux just launches the official website of Kali. Documentation, the bug tracker, and a few more things here if you want some training or you want to look through the exploit database you can here. Moving on, we have recently used, I won't have anything in here since I haven't really used anything. All applications allows you to see every single application available to you here in the Kali Linux distribution. Settings is going to be a subcategory that allows you to go through the various different types of settings for the system. So you have window manager and window manager tweaks. You can edit the graphical settings for XF config, sessions and startups, and much more here such as the power manager, mouse and touchpad, notifications, the keyboard, display settings, desktop settings to change up your background, appearances, network settings, as well as the settings manager, which really just gives you an overview of some of the settings that we've already mentioned. Exiting out of here, going back into the start menu, we can look at the subcategory called usual applications. This allows you to see more subcategories, which are typical applications that a user may or may not use. In the development, we have such things as a browser for SQL Lite or a secondary SQL Lite database browser. Accessories come with some various different tools and accessories such as screenshot, the task manager, launching the file manager, launching Vim, and even the Mate calculator. Under graphics, we have the Ristretto image viewer to view our images. Internet allows you to get a hold of Chromium, Firefox, and some other stuff here that are really tools in order to use with the internet. Under multimedia, we have Kazam, which we talked about before. You have Parole, Media Player, and Pulse Audio Volume Controller to control your audio settings. In Office, we have a Trill Document Viewer for your PDFs. We have the Kali Undercover Mode, which sets the Kali Desktop into a mode where 
it looks like Windows 10. It's quite clever if you wanna go ahead and give this a shot. And then as we spoke about before, the Kali high DPI mode. In system, we have such things as the Q terminal and Gparted as well. A few other terminals available, the task manager, the default file manager, print settings, and a few more things here. Now to the great part of Kali Linux, all the security tools and categories that we have, we have things such as information gathering, vulnerability analysis, web application analysis, database assessment, password attacks, wireless attacks, reverse engineering, exploitation tools, sniffing and snooping, post-exploitation, forensics, reporting tools, social engineering tools, and Kali and OFSEC links. These are all great and they all have plenty of different tools that you can use and search through depending on what you're interested in. I could really do a whole different video on just the different various tools that they have offered here for security purposes, hacking, vulnerabilities, all the fun stuff, forensics, whatever you like using. So I'll go ahead and let you check these out if you wanna go ahead and install Kali and choose whatever you're most interested in using in Kali Linux so we don't go through too much here. Just know that there are a bunch of security tools available here by default. On the bottom right of the start menu, we have a logout feature to lock the screen or access the settings as well. Currently I'm logged in as the Kali Live user since I'm using a live image, but this is where your username will show up if you have it installed on your computer. If you right click, you can get to a few more things. You can open a new window, create a launcher, create a URL link, a folder, a document, open up a terminal in this location, find a certain folder, arrange the desktop icons, go to the desktop settings, hit properties, or launch an application even from here. Nice little feature and it's neat to know about. Let's go to desktop settings where we can see the various different wallpapers that are available to you. The standard one's fine for me. You can also go through menus to check or uncheck certain features and set up what your icons look from the icons tab. So if we launch just a few programs here real quick, we can check out the top here where you can't really arrange stuff if you wanna arrange it. It doesn't really give you the option to do that up here, but you can go through the various different windows and open them one by one and even right click and then move them around and or just go ahead and close them out completely. But you must right click to go ahead and use these options up here. All right, I'm going to launch a new terminal here and just check out HTOP real quick. In HTOP, we can see that my CPU usage is probably going between somewhere around zero to 2%. I currently have 73 tasks running and 131 threads, and there's currently about 810 megabytes out of the 7.8 gigs of memory that I have available here. You can see that there's quite a few processes running in the background, but nothing too daunting here for the system in Kali. We'll go ahead and exit out of this, and we'll just check out NeoFetch as well. So if I launch a terminal and just type in NeoFetch, we can check out some of the system information here using NeoFetch. This is currently Kali Linux, the rolling release x86-64. We're currently running it on VirtualBox just to test things out. The kernel is a 5.7 Kali 1 AMD, so a special flavor of the Linux kernel for Kali. We've been up for about 43 minutes and there's about 2,254 packages here. The bash shell version is 5.0. Remember, they're going to be moving over to ZSH in the next release. The default desktop environment is XFCE and the window manager is XFWM4. It's using the Kali Dark theme and the Flat Remix Blue Dark icon set. The default terminal is Q-Terminal and we're running this on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.